Tommy was eight years old. He was emotionally disturbed and he lived in a children's home. It was Christmas Eve and there was a special program with a festive supper to follow. But Tommy did not show up. Jason, his youth care worker, went looking for him and found him hiding under a bed. Now, Tommy was little for an eight-year-old. Jason could easily have pulled him out. But pulling is not what Tommy needed. Tommy needed opportunities to build trust. Tommy needed opportunities to be reminded that people were with him, to be reminded that he was loved. So Jason crouched down on all fours and began a conversation with Tommy. Well, he tried. Jason told Tommy about the special food for Christmas Eve supper. No response. Jason told Tommy about the special stocking that was hanging in front of the fireplace with his name on it. No response. Finally, Jason got down on his tummy and wriggled in under the bed to be with Tommy. While he just lay there beside Tom, quietly, just to be with him. Then Jason tried a conversation again about the candles in the windows, about the tree and the dining room. Still, no response. So Jason just lay there with Tommy or so that he could actually fit under the bed. But he just lay there to be with Tommy. As Jason waited, a small, chilled hand reached out and touched his own. After a bit, Jason said, You know, Tommy, it's kind of tight under here. How about if we get up and stand, get out and stand up? So they did. Because the gift of presence had changed Tommy's heart. Tommy was touched because Jason had been with him. The gift of presence changed Tommy. This reminds me of what Jesus did for us 2,000 years ago. Jesus crawled under that bed to be with us in our distress. Sometimes simply waiting for us to reach out and put our hand into his. Jesus gave us a gift of presence. And that is the most meaningful gift that we can give to others. Scripture has something to say about that. So let's take a look at our story of Jesus' birth from Matthew 1. At the time when Jesus was born, Israel, as a nation, was under the Roman under Roman rule. The people were in distress, waiting for God to free them from the Roman Empire. They believed that God would someday send a king from the line of David who would bring God's favor back to Israel. So today we read about Joseph and Mary are engaged to be married. Engaged to be married, but talking about divorce. That sounds a little bit confusing. 
It's confusing unless we understand the three stages of marriage in the Israeli culture. The first stage of engagement in Israeli culture is engagement, or the first stage of marriage is engagement. And engagement was often arranged during childhood. When children were young, the families would make these arrangements. So it would be like if Luke or, uh, Laura and Seth would arrange with Emily and Ben for Luke to marry Haley. And they're still children. But you have this agreement that someday they're going to marry. The second stage of marriage is betrothal. And this is usually about 12 months long. Betrothal is the time to confirm the engagement. Or it could be broken off if any of the parties disagree to continue. It might be the parents, it might be the children. So there is a way out for the Haynes and the Martin families if they don't want to move ahead with this. But that's the second stage of marriage. The third stage of marriage is the marriage itself. But I should mention that the betrothal actually is a binding agreement. Once the betrothal is agreed upon, it, it's the binding agreement of a marriage, and you cannot leave it without a divorce. And that's, that's where Joseph found himself in, in our story today. And the couple was not to have any sexual relations during the betrothal. They were never left by themselves during that betrothal. They were only ever by themselves after the marriage So this third stage then of marriage was the marriage itself, which came about through a wedding. And then at that point, the couple was considered married. They would move into their own home together, probably surrounded by other family, but they could be alone and they could be sexually intimate at that point. So our story today is about Mary and Joseph engaged, but actually betrothed. This official binding agreement had already happened. But the wedding had not yet happened. So Mary, at this time, became pregnant. By the power of the Holy Spirit, she became pregnant. She was an unwed teenager, still living at home with her parents, and she became pregnant. But not by Joseph and she was legally bound to marry Joseph. Imagine the trouble that she found herself in. Because of her culture, she couldn't even talk privately with Joseph about it, because they could not be together alone. They probably didn't ever spend time except with families together. This means that Joseph then hears about this pregnancy from someone else. He doesn't hear it from Mary, he hears it from someone else. He hears that his fiance, almost wife, is pregnant. What a dilemma. Joseph is a righteous man, an upright man. He is kind, upstanding, honorable, noble. He is righteous. He had abided by the Jewish law. And he had not had sex with Mary. But now this, this, this awful news that Mary is pregnant. What had happened? Well, Joseph knew what happened. He knew how babies happen. Obviously, Mary had cheated on him. Now Joseph is annoyed, chagrined, frustrated, disappointed, humiliated. He can only believe one thing. Mary was unfaithful. She had had sex with another man. How could he believe anything else? I don't think Joseph ever heard of anyone getting pregnant by the Holy Spirit before. That's not really a very common thing. So, Joseph believed that Mary had been unfaithful. And because Joseph is righteous, he cannot tolerate her unfaithfulness. He cannot stay in the relationship with Mary. But because he is righteous, he is also noble 
and gracious. He doesn't want to disgrace Mary, this woman that he was about to marry. In fact, his priority was not to shame her. He knew that she would already be shamed by the community around her, and he didn't want to add to it. So he would divorce her quietly. This was his first response to the devastating news to divorce Mary. Sounds a little like 2017, right? Something goes wrong in the relationship, split up, divorce. Things get tough, walk away, break relationship. Sometimes it's the easiest way to move ahead. That was true for Joseph. Divorce was the easiest way to avoid further humiliation. But, good news, God intervened. God provided a way for Mary and Joseph to restore relationship. God sent an angel in a dream. As Joseph was sleeping, God spoke to Joseph. God still does that, by the way. Here at Olive, there are quite a number of people that could tell you stories about God speaking in that way. We could have a whole sermon about those stories. That's another, that's another day. The point is, the angel spoke, and Joseph heard the voice. Joseph listened, and Joseph responded. The angel said, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. She didn't sneak off and have sex with another man. She is pregnant by the power of the Holy Spirit. You will name him Jesus because Jesus will save people from their sins. What a strange story. What an extraordinary story. I am so grateful, so grateful that Joseph listened and Joseph responded. So, Joseph became the dad. Joseph isn't the birth dad. God is the birth dad. Because the Holy Spirit caused Mary to conceive. But that doesn't mean the Holy Spirit is going to raise Jesus. Joseph agrees to do that. Joseph agrees to raise this child as if Jesus was his very own. By doing so, Joseph gave a gift of presence to Mary and to Jesus. Wow. So, here we have Joseph, Mary, and Jesus. The holy family. It's a blended family. In many ways, that's quite normal. But in many ways, this is not normal at all. This is an extraordinary, very special story that happened to fulfill prophecy. God is the birth dad, but because Joseph, a descendant of David, named Jesus and adopted him, Jesus became a descendant of Israel's greatest king, as was prophesied. The Holy Spirit caused Mary to conceive. God took on flesh, came to earth in the form of a baby. God so loved the world that he gave his son Jesus to be born. Born to save us. Born to be Emmanuel, God with us. God entered Mary's flesh. God became flesh. God came to be with us. Just like Joseph, Jesus adopts us to be part of his family. Just like Jason, the Jesus crawled under that bed to be with us when we are in distress. 
sometimes simply waiting for us to put our hand in his. Jesus gave us a gift of presence. And that is the most meaningful gift that we can give to other people. Spend less. Give more presence. Last week we were challenged to spend less. Today we're invited to give more presence. That may sound like a contradiction, a paradox. But it really isn't because we're not talking about presence as in stuff. We're talking about presence as in yourself. Just like Jesus gave himself, we are invited to give ourselves. So instead of focusing on giving more stuff this Christmas season, let's think of ways to give ourselves. And that might happen by giving memorable gifts. What makes a gift memorable? Perhaps it's one that touches you deeply. It's probably memorable because of the relational quality of the gift. The best gifts will celebrate a relationship. A gift is memorable because of the time you take with the person that you are gifting. Perhaps it's the time you take to prepare the gift or the time you spend with the person as you are gifting that person. Because presence is the most meaningful gift that we can give to others. God gave a gift of presence through the birth of Jesus 2,000 years ago. God gave himself. God's gift to us is God's one and only son. God celebrated relationship with us in the gift of Jesus. God doesn't focus on giving material gifts. God doesn't focus on giving us stuff. God's gift to us is simply himself in the form of the baby Jesus. And thus, giving is a very natural response to celebrate Christmas, right? God gave Jesus. We give to others. However, if we want to give in the way that God gave, we will also give ourselves our presence. And when our giving in some way includes giving our presence to others around us, we reflect the power and the beauty of the gift of Jesus, the baby. So I challenge you this Christmas season to be with others. Give a gift of your presence. Be more intentionally present with those around you. Celebrate the coming of Jesus by being with someone. Now, it may be helpful to note that there is more than one way to be present with the people around you. There is physical presence, and there is emotional presence. Think about how Jason was intentionally present with Tommy under that bed. He was physically present, but he was also very emotionally present. He was with, totally with, Tommy under that bed. But have you ever been with anyone who kind of wondered, where are you? Are you here with me or not? We've probably all had that happen to us before. They are there but not really there. Physically present, but emotionally absent. Physically present, but really in another world somewhere. Many of us have been in a room with other people, with everyone on their own devices. Those of us who are tied to our phones understand how that easily happens. And it looks a bit like these pictures by French artist Antoine Geiger. It may look a little bit funny, but it's intentionally looking a little bit funny. 
look where that focus is, straight from the eyes down to that device. When we carry our phones, or those of us that do carry our phones and our devices, probably understand what this is about. And those of you that watch other people do it might also get it. It's common to be with others and yet be distracted on our devices, glued to our screens. Our phones pull us out of the moment. Our phones even pull us away from ourselves. We can be with other people and a whole crowd of people and not actually be with them emotionally because we are simply glued to that screen in front of us. Now, I know that not everyone here carries a phone or another device with them all day long. Perhaps for some of us, that thing at the other end of our eyes is a book. Maybe it's a newspaper. Maybe it's the TV screen. There are many, many things that can block us emotionally from the people around us. Whatever it is that keeps you from stopping, looking at, and listening to the people around you, is actually blocking you from being present with them. So these tech pictures are quite in contrast to the kind of presence gift that Jason gave to Tommy. Jason chose to squeeze in under the bed simply to be with Tommy, very emotionally present. These tech pictures are very much in contrast to the gift of presence that Joseph gave by raising Jesus as his own son. These tech pictures that I just showed you are very much in contrast to what Jesus has done for us. Jesus to chose to take on flesh and to become one of us and to be present among us, very in tune and listening. Jesus stopped, looked at, and listened to the people around him. Jesus gave a gift of presence. And that is the most meaningful gift that we can give to one another. Jesus challenges us to give the gift of presence. Give your gift of presence, both physically and emotionally. Now, there are many ways we can do that. One might be, lay down the phone. It might be to lay down the newspaper or to turn off the TV screen. Whatever it is that's blocking you from stopping, looking at, and listening to that other person. I challenge you to stop, look at, and listen to the people you are with. You might actually try to have a no phone zone during your mealtimes this holiday season. You might actually try to have a no phone zone during your family times this Christmas season. It actually would allow you to be more present and to give you opportunity to stop, look at, and listen to those people around you. So the first way to be more present is to simply remove those barriers that are keeping you from being present. A second way to be more present is to choose to give gifts that give yourself. Give gifts of presence this holiday season. Choose memory-making gifts instead of just stuff. Give gifts that are about quality time together. It might be making cookies together like we saw on the video at the beginning of the service. Making cookies together and giving them to a neighbor. It might be going to a movie together or sitting on the couch and watching a movie together. Maybe it's going out to eat. Maybe it's giving supplies to make a craft together. Give the gift of presence as you give gifts to one another. You might give a coupon to go to the zoo or to go to a museum or to an amusement park. Perhaps your gift will be to go together to a live musical or to a sporting event. Whatever time gift you give, remember that you are creating memories 
and you are giving yourself just as God gave Jesus and gave himself through that. This Christmas and beyond, I invite you to be present physically and emotionally. I invite you to give more presents, like Jason did with Tommy, crawling under the bed, just being with him, waiting for him to put his hand in his. I invite you to give more presents, just as Joseph did, by adopting Jesus as his own son. I invite you to give more presents as Jesus did by coming to earth, taking on flesh and becoming the form of a baby, waiting for us to reach out and put our hand in his when we are distressed. This Christmas and beyond, I invite you to give a gift of presents and then to choose to be present as you give that gift. I'd like us to take now a moment of silence and think about how each one of us will do that. Take your bulletins, you note, as usual, inside the bulletin is a place for sermon notes. And on your bulletin, I invite you in this next moment of silence, to record one thing that you will do this week and one thing that you will do this season to give a gift of presence to someone else. So we'll just take about a minute of silence and record what you will do to give the gift of presence. God took on flesh and came to earth in the form of a baby. They will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jesus gave a gift of presence. Your presence is the most meaningful and the most lasting gift that you can give. Amen.